So what are the things you should be looking for when you receive an offer? You know, obviously most sellers are trying to uh, maximize the profit on their return on their asset of their home. So what are the things you should be doing when you receive offers and how to review them correctly? And what are some of the things that we're seeing in today's market with everything being so crazy uh, with the limited inventory and uh, everything selling multiple offers and flying off the shelf? So how do you handle that and what should you be looking for? So I think everyone starts off with price. And that's the first thing they look at is price, you know, and then they look at is it is it, are we cash or are we a loan? What type of loans are there? You know, because there's different restrictions for FHA, rural development, uh, conventional loans. So you need to break that down. You know, what is the home inspection period? You know, how do we, how do, how long do they have to do all the home inspections? What does that even mean? Is there a resolution period or anything else? Or did they just waive it? Like a lot of people are waiving home inspections in today's market to try to get their offer accepted. Okay, now we've got appraisals. You know, um, good thing is you got a lot of multiple offers and you got offers way over asking price. Um, but if it's contingent on a loan, it still has to appraise for that value or they can't get it. So I've seen a lot of people over asking right now uh, to get their offer accepted. And then when it doesn't appraise, then they have to renegotiate the price down. So be smart, understand you know what appraisal is, where your property is probably going to appraise at, you know, and then look at all your loan types. You know, when you're looking at loan types, there's a... Um, uh, loan to value ratio on the co most contracts has a loan to value ratio so that if you look at that it will tell you um, if you're the, the buyer how much money they have and what's their down payment going to be so if they're putting 20 percent down 30 percent 40 percent down uh, on the loan and that tells you they have money so they might be you might be able to do a appraisal gap clause in your contract but you are seeing a lot of these coming now uh, appraisal gap clauses, which that means that they will make up the difference between the appraisal. So if you've got your uh, house under contract for two hundred thousand and it appraises for one hundred ninety thousand, you know, and they've got a ten thousand dollar appraisal gap uh, clause in the contract, that means they're going to make up that ten thousand dollar gap, you know, to push it through. So if you think your house is going to over over uh, under appraise. You might be trying to get this in the contract, the initial contract. So look for appraisal gap clause. So another crazy clause out there right now is the escalation clause, which basically they'll write that into the contract, you know, that uh, we will beat any and all offers by a certain amount. Let's just say $5,000. So we'll beat any offer by $5,000 up to a certain amount. So let's, as an example, let's say you had another $200,000 house, you know, in your highest offer, was two hundred thousand dollars, and then you get another offer with the escalation clause in it, and it says we'll beat your highest offer by five uh, five thousand dollars up to two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So now, now you've got automatically got an offer for two hundred five thousand dollars. So, but what's important to that? You need to know your loan type, or is it cash, or is it you know the loan type? Then you got to you know the appraisal, and then you need to get an appraisal gap clause in it too. Because what they might be trying to do is get their offer accepted and then renegotiate once they get their appraisal. So a lot of investors like the top properties because uh, they do cash deals you know, real quick to get them uh, accepted. But then it comes to the home inspection. That's their term to negotiate and they can get out of the contract for that. So be careful of that too. Um, another thing we're seeing a lot of right now is the oxy agreement. So um, a lot of a lot of people are writing in contracts that they will give these sellers an additional seven days, ten days, fifteen days, thirty days to vacate the property after closing, and no additional cost to try to get their offer accepted. So, great time to be selling a home right now. There's no doubt about that. With the limited inventory, it is a seller market. Um, you know, prices are going at all time highs. We are having a lot of houses not appraised right now too, because of that. So, be careful with that. Make sure you get the appraisal. A gap clause in your contract, you know, to cover that if you think you're going to be in that situation. So here's just some of the things that we look at, you know, when offers and how we compare them, how we talk to our clients. Hey, these are all the things you need to be looking at. And you should be running your pros and cons out and eliminating certain offers for this. You know, our goal is for our clients is to get them the best terms and best deal, which is whatever their goals that are in the, you know, within the uh, transaction. So. I hope this is helpful. There's a lot of stuff on here. I just really want to hit on the escalation clause, the appraisal gap clause, and the oxy agreement, which we're seeing a lot of right now in offers. You know, and be aware of the appraisal, and you know, because that is important right now with the way uh, prices are moving. Um, the, you know, the appraisers are not keeping up with the market. You know, and they're you know a lot of homes are being 
under appraisal in the contract. So you'll have issues once you get to that. So if you need any help, my name is Matt Lane with First Class Real Estate Advisors. You know, I hope this is helpful and please reach out.